Hello everybody, welcome to another Glenys Garnet Creative Images video. Um, today we're going to look at this Moonlight Flight image. Um, I've used one brush in it, just the, the crow's brush which you can see on here. And there's a, a technique in here which uh, is probably new to some people. Um, it's the, um, the light effects, how to get this light effects here where the moon light is uh, uh, is showing and um, this image is made up of a start image uh, and we're going to first of all look at that start image so you can see how that was built up and I started off with let's go to here and show you I'll switch these layers off and you'll see here started off with this original image which is um, a nice misty woodland shot in uh, Wheatley Wood near uh, Woolley near Wakefield and um, I've just did created a layers adjustment layer here and just adjusted that got some uh, uh, contrast into it and then the next layer is a copy if I believe I believe I think that might be I can't remember now, but I think it's a copy of the same layer. Anyway, let's let's just look at it. Uh, but what I've done with this, if we just switch off here, you can see it's set. The opacity is quite low. I've set the opacity quite low at 70 percent. Take that up there. Ah, I remember what I've done with this. I've um, I've used a motion blur. Um, I've used a motion blur. On, on this image here um, so let's show you how to do that um, let's switch these layers off here and we'll duplicate that layer Control J and then we'll go to filter blur motion blur and we'll set that to 90 degrees let's get up there let's pop 90 degrees in there and you see there, that's what you get with a motion blur. You can, it, it does, it's like doing an ICM in the woodland where you're moving the camera up and down. So you can see there, that's how we got that motion blur on that. And if we click OK on there, if you have a look on that, that one there, you see that's that image there. So um, what I've done, so we'll delete that. So that's the motion blur layer. And what I'll do is, I'll delete that for now. But what I've done is I've duplicated it, but I've only added part of it. I've added just this part here, mainly because I wanted to keep some of the definition in this side, because that's the side where the moonlight's going to come through and the crows are flying through. And what I've also done is I've added a mask onto this and I've just, um, um, I've just masked out some of the side down here if we have if we switch that layer mask off you see it's just masked out that little bit here just using a soft brush so that's that then i've created a use saturation layer to turn it a little bit blue so we're getting towards like a when it goes into the image it's going to be a bit of a um a dark night and then this final layer is an image I, i've got of some let's just switch those layers off and you show you what we've got and that's just a layer 53% uh, with some beech leaves in and get that down to 53% again well, it doesn't matter because it's, it's going to be saved and switch these layers back on and that was applied as a soft light just so that it gives me a little bit of definition a little bit of um, leaf action in there so that was the start layer and then once I'd created that start layer, let's switch all these off and we know you can see where we started. One side, oops, sorry. Once I'd created that um, layer, I've then pulled it into this 20 by 20 image, uh, working in a square format like I, I usually like to do. Um, what I've done is basically I've done a, I've, I've dragged the layer in here. And then I've duplicated it using Control J, and then I've added that in as a multiply layer, just so it darkens it. So you can see we're starting to build up some uh, 
um, the image now. So we've still got some, some of the definition from those lovely beech leaves uh, in there. Um, the next layer is if we just if I just switch off the, the layer mask on this, um, let's disable the layer mask and pop that into normal blend mode. You see, this is a set, this is just an image that I've pulled in um, of some rowan rowan berries, I think. But it happened to have some um, nice out of focus leaves here, which I thought would look good coming down over the top of the image. So what I did was I set this as a colour overlay blend mode. And what that does is it maintains the colour without affecting the under, underlying the, the lightness of the underlying layer. So it doesn't make any it doesn't darken it. If I if I set that to say a, a multiply or some of the other, let's go through some of the other modes and you'll see what you get. If we move through the modes, it, nearly all the modes will affect the underlying lightness of the layer because it's a full image. It's not just the, the leaves that, that are going to affect it. So as we come down, you'll, as we come to colour, you'll see that it doesn't have, have any effect on the lightness of the underlying layer. So that's what we wanted in that. And what I wanted to do then as well was because I've got this this uh, these um, rowan berries showing through, I've created the um, uh, the, the the layer mask here uh, and just used the, um, the the soft brush to delete. In fact, let's create a copy of that layer, and I'll show you how. Let's do a Control J. Um, Let's take that off and let's pop uh, let's delete that layer mask on there and then we'll create a new layer mask and we'll take the soft brush here and we set this set the palette to black and white to make sure that you've got um, your foreground color and your background color is set to black and white and as long as the the, the foreground color is set to back and I use a soft brush I can start to delete. Oh, sorry. Let's set that up to 100% to start with. Uh, I can start to, to delete anything on this underlying layer. So you see what's happening there. It's deleting some of this color from down below here, which I don't want uh, if I increase the brush. Now, I may do that with a an element of softness sometimes, depending on how I want to do the the image, but just soften it up a little bit round the edges of the rest of it, so on and so forth, till we get rid of that that colouring or at least the, the other bits in there. Um, so we're going to delete that layer. I'm going to put the layer on the original layer that I use, so we'll delete that. The next layer is a just a, a general hue saturation layer, and you'll see on here what I've done is uh, on the master, which is all of the colours, I've increased the saturation. A little bit, change the hue a little bit, like that, you see. And I think I may have, have let's just check whether I've adjusted any of the other colours. I don't think so. I think it was just a master colour change, yeah, on there. Um, so we've got a little bit more saturation in there. And then I've added a, crow, a blank layer and added the crows in there with one of the crows brushes I've, I've, I've got. Now, the next two layers are just general texture layers. And if we, you see these two, once these are added in, you're getting that now, that darkness that we've, we've got in the final image. And if we take a look at this layer, I think that layer's got the scratches on. Yeah, that's like a scratch layer. And this layer is just a, a wash, like a faint wash, washed layer. And the, the bottom texture has been added as a multiply layer. If we pop that there, you see. We've gone as a multiply layer in this to darken the image. And the same for the scratches uh, background layer. Um, then we've added a, a levels layer in. And you'll see on here that I've just got some lightness back into the image. Adjusted the darkness and so on and so forth using levels. 
and then this layer here is a copy of the layers below so if we do a control alt shift e we will get a copy let's do it on here we'll get a copy of the layers below so it's basically a combination of all these layers down here so let's just delete that one we don't need that and we'll just do this now the next layer is um, a color lookup table if, if you've got your adjustments um, palette open here on the top right hand side of this you'll see a color lookup box little square box little grid box and let's just move this over here a little bit and if you click on that you'll see what happens is it it opens up a um, a list of preset photoshop color lookup uh, tables basically and if you if you scroll down these you'll see you can get some quite nice effects and you can create your own color lookups it isn't just a color overlay it's sometimes got a contrast or a, a saturation incorporated into it so it's worth going through these color lookups and see if there's anything that suits your particular image and of course once we've found one in in my case what i used in this one was the the moonlight color lookup now you see it's it's added a very very dark pink uh, dark blue look to it and what you would often do what i find myself doing with color lookups is I'll often play about with the the opacity on these till i get them to the to the way I, way that i want them and i might use more than one at the uh, at the same time i might, might use two or three of these in an image just to get a look and feel so we'll get rid of that one and we'll go to the, the one i've created so i've got the moonlight one you can also use them as a blend mode as well so you don't have to just use them as uh, normal layers uh, that's set at 50 percent uh let's get rid of that and um if we wanted to add another one we'll just click that button again and you'll see if we go down let's go for a try a few different ones and you see you can you can play about with the different modes so if you went for something like edgy amber you could bring that down start to get some some amber coloring in there I and mean, as it happens we're not going to do that so let's delete that we'll just use the one in here um, then i've added a, another u saturation uh, layer in here now i'm not quite sure where, what i've done on this so let's have a quick look ah i've obviously reduced the the, that's right I've, I've you i've reduced the saturation on the the yellow bit here uh on the leaves up there so that's there you go that you can see that when it's switched on and off now the next layer this is where the the magic light starts to come in because the next layer i've just done a copy of the next layer so another another layer copy using uh shift control alt e and what we've done here is we've created two layers let's let's do another layer of of, of that we created another layer and a, and a copy layer and you'll see the effect we've got here which is like a moonlight effect and we get that now we get that by using the lighting effects in um in the filter options here if we come down to render you'll see there's an option to do lighting effects now what you have to remember with some of the effects in um, uh, photoshop like the filter gallery and the um, and, and and other effects you can see there on the stylized that you've, you've got tiles and extrude you can only do use some of these effects if the image is an 8-bit image this is actually a 16-bit image so what we've got to do is we've got to um we've got to make this into an 8-bit image so if we go to edit and sorry image and mode and you'll see here you've got the option to change it to an 8-bit or 16-bit now if you change it down to an 8-bit you are going to lose some some um, color uh, um, what i mean by that is that the, the, there's let there are less colors in the document but it, it will have a negligible effect on on what we're doing so i'm not too worried about that and now what should happen is if we go to filter we should now see the filter gallery is is available and if we go down to render we can see that the lighting effects is available 
So if we click on the lighting effects, um, what will happen is we'll get a... Um, when it's ready. Here we go. Uh, we've now got a, a tool here which we can rotate and move around the screen and we can size up we can size up and locate it wherever we want to locate it we can move it about we can change the direction and there's some options basically when we're changing these if you look on the right hand side um, we've actually got an orange light in this which I don't want which one probably I've done earlier so what we're going to do is we're going to go to a white light, um, just click on that, and we can increase the intensity of the light, just have to be careful that you don't do it too much, and, and we can create the site, resize the hotspot. And we're not, we can adjust this exposure up and down a little bit, and we're not going to, I'm not going to go into what the gloss and metallic and ambience and things like that is. I think you should go in and play and have a little little play with this. But we're just going to go for the white light. We'll increase the hot spot a little bit, but not too much. And I think we'll bring the intensity down. We want it to look like moonlight. We don't want it too much. Now you can see what it does is it will also affect the rest of the image. It will darken the rest of the image, and but concentrate this nice white light here in the corner. So we're just going to click OK on that and let it do its work. And once it's done that, you'll see that I've now got, if I take that off, it's now given me almost like a moonlight look to it. Um, now, if I put my original back, that's, and delete that, um, that's my original, the way I did it with that bright light. So we've got the darkness, darkness down here and this lovely bright light looking like moonlight. And that is that. I think with this image, I, I probably brought it into Photoshop, uh, sorry, into Lightroom. And I've probably just made some minor adjustments, but but not much to, to brightness and, 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 and so on and a few tonal changes. But that's it. That's that uh, moonlight flight image. Hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you. Bye-bye.